Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. A lot of great stuff to talk about. All of today's stories will be time marked down below. As always, let's hop into our first story though, which might spark a little bit of controversy. And first off, I do want to thank all of you guys on yesterday's very lengthy episode. We had over 200 comments, so I do appreciate the feedback from all of you. Let's have a comment down below about this first story about an event in Brazil possibly coming in sometime 2018. We'll talk about that in some in some distance for all of you guys, as well as of course the controversy around that. So first to preface all of this, to give you guys background, the last time we actually were in Brazil was in Sao Paulo. It was a couple years ago, actually, uh, Pro League Finals Season 4, and we, ever since, and we've had several pro players come out about, of course, the environment known to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, Brazilian fans known to be a little bit more aggressive, maybe angry at some times, uh, historically speaking. Now, first off, I will defend them in the future. There's definitely an equal amount of aggressive fans for North America and Europe. They might just not be shown in the, in the same spotlight as Brazilian fans are. It seems whenever a Brazilian fan goes a little bit crazy, of course, they're caught out. So first off, I do want to share with you guys the first evidence of of this was Hiko. He was at ESL Pro League Season 4 Finals, and he uh, had actually came out about this as well. Uh, it was actually known at that event he had his own security for it, and this also happened as well. He talked about this on a stream quite some time ago. I found my, my mom and my sister's Facebook, and they were literally spamming them like that same week before I was going to go of, if you come to Brazil, we're going to kill you. you know, we hate you. Brazil hates you. Uh, don't even bother coming. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna risk my life. You know, whether whether the risk is there or not, like I personally am not going to risk my life to go play a tournament in Brazil. And then on top of that, unfortunately enough, we've had other pro players come out, the most notably uh, a few days ago, actually we had Freiburg just last night talk about his experience in Brazil, and of course he, uh, I do want to say, if you guys cannot hear it correctly, I'll play the clip in a second here, he did trigger, he tried to a little bit kind of elude this behavior out of the crowd, but here's what happened when he provoked Brazilian fans as well. But I don't know why. <laughs> There I mean, the, so uh, people are saying they want a major in Brazil. Last time I was in Brazil, I kind of triggered the crowd a bit, and then they made <laughs> they made new signs during the game, where they in the signs they said that they would kill me after the game. <laughs> what? <laughs> So it does seem, based off this previous information, we've also had Richard Lewis and Thorne talk about Brazilian events and how they have been kind of not toxic, but a bit more dangerous for these players and have definitely had pro players question going to Brazil for these kind of events. Is it really worth your life or your security to go to an event? If it's large enough, for sure, but I don't think it's going to be a major in 2018. But it is unfortunate to actually see all these pro players come out about this. And it seems the most common thing they actually have said is, of course, these Brazilian fans saying they're going to kill them or they're going to meet them outside. And of course, death threats are the most serious kind of threat and that cannot be taken lightly but of course we had a few months ago some rumors spread about a possible event coming in 2018 to Sao Paulo Brazil those rumors have yet to be confirmed actually we had the ESL CEO of Brazilian esports uh, the Brazilian side of ECL actually tweet out this a while ago it ran a poll for all of you guys who cannot translate yourself it does say uh, of course uh, in 2018 we want ESL to host an event the first poll says to have a major and the other the second line says if it's not a major we should still have it anyway and yes of course you guys can see over 10,000 votes. This was in no way actually saying they're going to guarantee have an event. Actually, as of right now, ESL has already confirmed their next event in 2018, their next big event, which will not be a major to be in Cologne, so back in Germany again. So as of right now, these rumors have yet to be confirmed at all, and for, for what I know and for what I've seen from pro players and other analysts out there, I don't expect Brazil to land an event in 2018 or anytime soon, especially with this kind of backing from the environment. And of course, the last few days we had SK kind of, not necessarily erupt, but they sent out some unnecessary tweets towards FaZe Clan. Again, I was not offended by them. I didn't find them very offensive, but it's certainly not helping their stance on why they sh anyone should bring an event to Sao Paulo or a big event to Brazil. Although, you could also argue on top of that, of course, there's many other fans out there who have done some very rude things towards Brazilian people. I'll play you guys a clip right now. In that clip is actually Cold Zero's very own father, and of course, you'll notice the fan right behind him flicking him off live on, on stream. Pasha goes for the peak. And that is going to be the defuse here. What an incredibly tense situation. See Cole's dad's well into this. Great to see him at Columbus. And he what an incredibly tense situation. So again, it's quite obvious. There are many clips out there that can show other sides of things. It's quite obvious the disrespect goes both ways, towards Brazilian fans and from Brazilian fans, towards other people out there. Every fan base, every team has their toxic fans. It just seems that Brazilian fans, whenever they kind of have an outcry, uh, or an outcry like this, it, they're always in the spotlight and put in really bad lighting, especially the instance with KNG. It really just never, it never makes them look good. So I really do hope, though, with SK Gaming being the number one team in the world, and of course, having other Brazilian teams that are f fairly good, you know, maybe in the future as well, SK Gaming predominantly 
definitely being the number one by far right now. They deserve to have an event in their home country and there's definitely a financial reasoning to bring a big event there. So we'll cross our fingers for 2018. But now, lastly in our Brazilian CSGO news for these first two stories, we do have Fallen continually urging E-League to actually come out and review their case because of course they want to play with Bolts on that roster. Them partaking with him have been the most dominant roster we've seen in a long time ever since the rise of FaZe kind of a few months ago. So of course many people out there and many community members want to see SK Gaming with Bolts on that roster and E-League has yet to come out and Valve have yet to come out as to what their exact ruling is and if they're going to review the case or not. Most likely as of right now they'll be forced to play with Phelps and uh, it's kind of an awkward situation. I really, I don't, I want to know what you guys think about this. It's so awkward for me to think because this whole time while all of SK Gaming, all of Brazil is, you know, silently hoping and also publicly hoping they get to play with Bolts. We still have Phelps tweeting out things like this, like, yeah, guys, I mean, if if you guys want me to play, I'll play and I'll give it my best for my country. Like, yeah, it's just kind of an awkward situation to be in, but it does seem right now SK will be stuck with Phelps for the major in 2018. We'll see what happens, though, if E-League or Valve do respond. Well, we know Valve won't, so anyway, next story. And really quickly before we get into that next story, I do want to thank you uh, to OP Skins. They've actually launched a new thing called their Viral Ladder, so if you refer uh, people, you all are entered to actually win a lot of free prizes as part of their um, merch giveaway as well as their skin giveaway. If you guys refer friends, you get points. And so I'll leave that link down below. If you guys use my link, I do get a few points. As well as if you guys want to refer any of your own friends, every time you earn 100 points, you earn one ticket or one entry into a bunch of prize giveaways they're doing. I think as of right now, it's over $5,000 in prizes and it's absolutely free to enter. So if you guys want to use my link, I would definitely appreciate that. I have no sponsors, haven't had a really good sponsor in a long time. So maybe we'll make a tiny no You know what? Actually, if you guys want to click it, click it. If you guys don't, don't. Anyway, now under our big story though, and that is CSGO breaking prize pool records. So I know there's been a lot of debate over the past few months. Is CSGO dying? Is PUBG taking over? I think we're doing quite well as of right now. We'll see how 2018 works out. But we are still breaking records when it comes to the amount of money that CSGO is giving out. Now I'm sure you all know of the oversaturation issues, but it does seem that CSGO is approaching $18 million in prize pool, uh, prize pools distributed throughout the year of 2017, which is by far and away a brand new record, which is crazy to see. And in all of esports, of course, that definitely ranks up there. We have Dota 2 having the International, which is an amazingly crowdfunded event. But besides that, CSGO is definitely a top three when it comes to prize pool distribution behind Dota 2 and League of Legends. And it's just great to see the growth of that because considering this, guys, think of this fun fact. Our first million dollar tournament in CSGO was just last year. 2016 MLG Columbus was the first million dollar tournament. And we've had three, I think three or two or three ever since then. And of course, we're breaking records continually with prize pool distribution. It's just great to see if the game is you know steadily growing out we're still giving away a bunch of money having plenty of events and there's definitely still life here which is just always reassuring and very lastly guys in this very very packed episode of CSK News I was expecting a way shorter episode than yesterday but why not close it out with this very interesting story released by the BBC obviously well known internationally guys I'm gonna link this article down below for all of you to read and give me your partake especially in the comments down below I know we've talked about skin gambling a lot but I thought why not congest it all into one video and I want to talk about this just for a brief amount of time guys and that is of course CSGO skin gambling gambling in general and of course the movement of many countries out there to try and ban in-game gambling. Now of course CSGO being the one of the more, more predominant gamblers out there we've had so many websites launch up and of course close down and then re-pop back up over the past year and a half to two years but is it a problem? That's the real question of course we had the country of Belgium a few weeks ago try and target loot crates and of course in-game gambling for other games out there that of course is going to be a very very lengthy process I myself have told all of you guys my opinion about this and I think it's you know legally regulation wise there's not much the government government can do in a short amount of time and I think it will continue to thrive for quite some time if not at least a year maybe even of course prolonged in the future but this article is very very kind of eye-opening of course the BBC can't cover everything to, the, to down to the T point but a very interesting facts and I'll show you guys a little bit of the video as well as the title did read people as young as 11 years old have gotten into skin gambling which I in my mind do not doubt whatsoever I know many people myself my own friends and a lot of you guys out there are very young and have gambled in some sort of way the article goes on to share with us information information out there such as 11% of 11 to 16 year olds will actually gamble away some kind of in-game currency which I thought was even a low number only 11% I'd say that's pretty good as of as of right now I know a lot of you guys are uh, in the 11 to 16 year old range I know a lot of you guys are also older as well but also over 50% of people our age or 11 to 16 are actually just aware of that so it's kind of crazy to see guys these numbers are continuing to rise over the past few years I know myself and all of you guys out there have definitely are aware of the gambling I'm not really sure why that number was also so low. Everyone that I know in the CSGO scene is certainly aware of the gambling scene itself. So I'll leave the article down below for all of you. What do you think about this? I don't think it's ever going to be stopped. And I'm going to talk about this in a My Thoughts Don't Matter episode sometime soon. And the topic for that will be 
Does CSGO need gambling? Do esports need gambling? I'll talk about that at length with all of you who are actually curious about that. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. Thank you all for, for letting me talk for over 10 minutes again. That's that's back-to-back -back episodes, over 10 minutes long of news. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like down below. More importantly, though, leave a comment about what you guys think. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you guys in a couple days with more of my CSGO, my thoughts. See, frick. <laughs>